Well, Singapore wants to make it easier to bring in foreign manpower for certain occupations that face a labour shortage. It's among measures announced by the Manpower Ministry to help supplement local workers and provide good jobs for them. That's right. Well, others include a new online tool for better job matching and new resources for flexible work arrangements as well. Now, this all on the back of a very strong labour market right now. For more, we have Manpower Minister Dr Tan Siling right here in the studios with us. Good evening, Minister, and thank you for joining us. Hello, hello, ladies. So the indications look very good. We have a strong labour market. Those jobs are chasing the workers now. Uh, on top of that, low unemployment. We've also got strong wage growth as well. Uh, these are important signals for the economy. Uh, it looks so good. What are you going to be doing and what are your priorities in the year ahead? Well, we have had a good run last year. Um, but if you look at it, there are headwinds that is actually not in the distant horizon, they're actually quite near with all the global uncertainties, the volatilities. And I think this is the best time while we're on a bit of a roll to seize whatever opportunities that can come our way and to make sure that we are better prepared for it, our workforce. At the same time, we need to continue to strengthen the entire um, local workforce and help to secure safer, progressive, more inclusive workplaces to ensure that um, all Singaporeans have a very fair and a very equitable um, work at, 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 at in, in their jobs itself. All right, as mentioned just before uh, you joined us for this conversation about this uh, bring in of foreign manpower for certain occupations that are facing a labour shortage. Mm. Of course, uh, we hear voices on the internet which are, which are not always reliable because they are the noisiest people generally, always concerns about Singapore workers being disadvantaged. Of course, we've got these tweaks coming up for foreign workers, essentially to try and ensure, as far as we can ensure, that we bring in the right kind of talent that grows our economy so that ultimately you get better and more jobs for Singaporean workers. We keep hearing about this global war for talent, right? The problem is, how do you calibrate your your definition of talent so that we get the right talent but we are not losing out in this global war for talent yeah well we are in a, um, a good situation um, the way covid was handled um, to quite a number of the forward-looking policies have enabled us to get to this place of uh, um, where we had fairly good results last year um, what it's important for us moving forward is how do we continue to differentiate the talent that we have amongst our midst. And we have set the talent that we want to bring into Singapore at the top one third in terms of, of our overall uh, workforce ratio. And by doing that, what we actually want to do is to ensure that the talent that we bring in are at that level to be able to not just become rainmakers, that is really the one pass, at the same time, they've got skill sets, the, the tech expertise, to be able to transfer, to be able to teach our own local graduates, our own local talent as well. So that whatever skills that they bring in can be complementary to our local workforce. And together, it becomes a win-win partnership. We can then forge and form the best teams to go out and compete globally. Mm. Being a small country like Singapore, we have got constraints of, of our population size. We've got constraints in terms of our rapidly aging population. Obviously, if we want to be able to stay in the top league itself, we need to continue to work with the best and collectively leverage on each other's strengths to cover and make up for the weaknesses so that we can actually keep ahead and, and move even faster than the competition. Dr Tan, I want to get your take as to what is at stake here insofar as what you've just spoken about, in terms of, in a way, we're trying to keep this balance, all right, uh, for the local uh, workforce to be complemented by uh, foreign talent or vice versa, to, to somehow get that balance, if it is at all possible. But there is more at stake. I mean, you want to be able to grow certain sectors as well. We need them, the healthcare yes. sector, yes. Uh, the tech sector. Uh, talk to us about how crucial that is. Well. In terms of the overall framework, when we set out to look at all of the industry itself, we have decided that the first thing we need to do is to make sure that we prepare our own 
local workforce to be ready. And so we invest significantly in terms of upskilling, reskilling, and we even work at the JTMs, the Jobs Transformation Maps, to help companies to understand at what stage of the automation the technological development is, and we actually expend monies to invest in these companies to help them to organize the redesign of their jobs. At the same time, WSG together with MOM offers these companies support, what we call a conversion, career conversion programs. And for the mid-career workers, those that are age 40 and above, we actually fund up to 90% of the programs, keeping them uh, employed and training them and upskilling them. So these are uh, very big initiatives that we do to invest in our own people. Now at the same time, uh, ostensibly because of the way um, economies have developed because of the rapid and accelerating change that is happening around the world. All of the disruptions that's happening in the tech industry, in financial services, as well as in healthcare. We need to make sure that we keep constantly abreast and ahead of these changes as well. So with that, we then have this foreign workforce policy called Compass, where we can bring in these people that is short in supply to help to level up our own people and we can then work together and complement each other very well. Right, you have to be able to preempt the That's gap right. rather than allow that gap to even occur widen. As, or widen. Yeah. Exactly. We, oh, we, we heard, uh, in fact, in Budget 2023, there were suggestions of that as well. The strengthening of our CPS system to ensure retirement adequacy, for example, raising the monthly salary ceiling as one, also contribution rates. If you could, and people always get caught up and lost in these mm. details. So yeah. explain that for us. Incisely, uh, incisively and concisely so that... Sure. So let's start from, from the, 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 the low-wage workers, right? We want to make sure that uh, the f retirement adequacy, adequacy, as I've said, as, as I've promised, that if they work consistently and they contributed consistently all their lives, by the time they retire, there should be enough in their basic retirement sums to enable CPF life to be paid out. So in that sense itself, for the bottom 20%, we not only just ensure that they are able to have that um, upgrading in terms of the progressive wage model, there's also the workfare income supplement that comes in to su su supplement their, their incomes. And by having a big part of that WIS going into CPF, then we have the broader um, middle uh, income segment itself. That we will continue to raise the wage ceiling all the way from the monthly wage ceiling from 6,000 to 8,000. But obviously, because of the global climate, what we have done is to make sure that um, we recognize some of the challenges that businesses face and we spread it out over four tranches over a period of a few years, three years, up to 2026. Um, the next thing for our senior workers. Um, because of the fact that their runway is significantly shorter, what we do um, is to continue to raise the CPF contribution rates right, uh, progressively over time. At the same time, we also raise the retirement age and the re-employment age. For those that, notwithstanding all of our initiatives and our policies, we then have Comcare and we have the Silver Support Scheme to support them. All right. Retirement adequacy, very important, uh, uh, apart from the discussion about job security for now and, and the future. Mm. Dr. Tan, thank you very much for the discussion. Thank you. Uh, we've been speaking there to Manpower Minister Dr. Tan Si Ling on the challenges and the opportunities, many of them for Singapore's labour market.